My group uh, mainly works in two different areas, in the areas of supramolecular chemistry and also in nanotechnology. In order to illustrate a little bit the type of molecules we do in our group, I have chosen uh, these uh, CPK models. These are very old models that we used to use many years ago where computers were not available, but they are good tools to show the shapes of the molecules we are working in the lab. The size of the real molecule with respect of the models you see here is the same size that the tennis ball has with respect to the Earth. So this is the difference in size. Uh, we work with very different shapes and I want to show you one that is very simple. This one, for example, this is a very flat molecule, it's called an ephthalocyanine and is mainly used for nanotechnology applications. Uh, another molecule we work, they have cavities. For example, this one here is called a cavitant and it has a big cavity. Eh? What you see here, this is a benzene molecule and the benzene molecule is the exact fit for the cavity. So in this way, with this molecule, we can recognize, for example, benzene. This is, for example, creatinine and this creatinine is the perfect fit to this cavity. So based on this, we can construct devices, not only molecules, but also nanotechnological devices that will be able to do the screening of this molecule in your blood or in your urine. Another type of uh, interesting molecules that we want to do here in my laboratory are called uh, rotaxanes. They are called rotaxanes because they have a molecule that is a rotor and also they have another molecule that is an axis. We have to put big stoppers at the end so the molecule that is the rotor cannot escape. And what we want to do with these molecules is to build very, very primitive molecular machines. So we want to control the movement from this rotor from the white station to the yellow station. And if we want to do that, we control translation of motion, which is one of the important things if we want to construct molecular machine. So we have to make from this Lego something more realistic. And this is the realistic molecule that we construct. This instead of being uh, the, the rotor here that you have seen built with Lego, this is a, a rotor made of uh, atoms. You see it has a, a macrocyclic shape and also it has a lot of functional groups that converge in this cavity. For example, to build this molecule, we use a strategy which is called template. So we take another molecule that fits perfectly inside that one, and this allows the synthesis. The first thing we do is we design them using a computer. Some years ago, we were using these models. Once it's designed, we say, or we, we think how to make them experimentally in the laboratory using organic chemistry or inorganic chemistry. And once we have the molecule, we go and do some physical chemical experiments to make sure that the molecule behaves the way we have predicted. And if this is the case, then we can handle this molecule to some of our collaborators and they will produce the devices. These will be nanotechnological devices that will be, for example, useful, as I said before, for sensing creatinine, but may also be used for sensing benzene in the air, which is a very uh, bad pollutant. 